Another spicy episode of Classroom of the Elite. Hirata got wrecked. Who else got wrecked? Hirata got wrecked. Koenji Gigachad, Mr. H, Brandon Reviews, has some things to say. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, police. I think I just witnessed a murder. Okay. It's pretty much me leaving this week's episode of Classroom of the Elite because holy hell, man. I mean, I already know a good amount of the fandoms probably just going to say Hirata was a bit of a a bit of a coward or this or that. Apparently, Hirata was done dirty in the anime. A lot of people are crying in my YouTube video. They're like, oh, Hirata's moment got ruined. I promise in the light novel he wasn't such a fucking bitch. He's a bitch, dude. Straight up. Anime only? I, honestly, no. I, I don't like this line of thinking at all. I'm doubling down. Fuck him. Like, I get it. I, I, I totally get it that his past friend back in middle school days, some kind of like suicide attempt. I understand. He's like a vegetative state. I understand. But beyond that, like what? That trauma triggered you? Yamagod leaving triggered you again? And that reminds you of that? I don't know about that. That's kind of a reach. But they did skip out the moment where Hidata apparently... I theorized this because Hidata is like a, such a selfless person. I was like... You know, why doesn't he, like, offer himself as a sacrifice to save the class, right? That's what he, the doormat, would do, but apparently the anime just kind of cut that shit out, so the anime made Hirata look bad. That, but the actual bullying angle makes sense for where they went with. I think he deserved to be punished and to have a reality check 100%, yeah. but I really like what they did with his character, and it definitely explains the motivation of why he was so bound and determined to just kind of lose it over a character who... I... I kind of wish that Ryu and Hirata would come back. You know what I mean? Like, because, like, Hirata was apparently, like, Ryu in middle school, and I kind of laughed at that. But, like, yo, could we have that Hirata back just for, like, a couple episodes? I don't think many people shed a tear that he's actually gone, minus a handful who were friends, right? But to see a man who is so good at manipulating people as if they're chess pieces on a board, which mm -hmm. kind of goes hand in hand with how he says, like, if he's trying, no one will ever beat him at chess. And apparently that wasn't just chess. As if I as an anime only supposed to fucking know. Fucking light novel people are like, hmm, actually when he said that at timestamp 19 minutes and 30 seconds, I don't know meant that he would never be beaten in anything. Not just chess. If he tried, he would never be beaten. Pretty cocky, but it's him. I kind of believe him. And that's what this is. It's a game of life in the form of chess. And the way he just tears him down to say you are to blame. This and that. If you were you're gonna have this motivation that you think it's possible to save as irrational as it is, that blame of not being able to is completely on you. But then the way he rebuilds him to make mm. him a valuable asset once again. I think the most frightening characters aren't ones who kill people or eliminates them. Nobody dies in this anime, remember? This is not a shonen battle anime. Nobody actually dies. Because it's easy and it makes their life easy. I think the most, you know, crazy or frightening characters are those who recognize the value in a person and okay. would rather keep them around and keep them in the way they need to in order to use them like a tool. And that's... Arisu, I think, behaves just like that, huh? I mean, I would like to think that Arisu, like... The way that she, she kind of like protected Baldi, right, Katsuragi, as well as Ayano Koji, right? I, I think that Aisu does understand like who the really top students are. They're pretty much all tools. They're all just trying to use each other. But I, I do like the, the respect that Aisu gives to other classmates. Even if they're opponents, he's like, nah, I'm going to save Koji. I'm going to save Baldi. They're pretty useful. It's pretty much what Ayano Koji does. And watching him absolutely destroy Hirata in this episode and the way he comes back pretty much as we've we're used to expecting him this special exam is gonna be crazy that's all i'm saying of course is it though is the special exam actually gonna get crazy or are we just gonna have skipping all the fucking matches and just speed running to the chess match and then you know nothing after that let's have a full live reaction to this week's episode of classroom of the elite over on my patreon if you want to see my full check him out guys there over there if you're interested now this was another uh, a perfect episode in my mind when you skip the opening you know things are a <laughs> perfect episode <laughs> i'm not shitting on brandon for saying that it's just funny because because <laughs> this basis you pen video if you look at his stuff, what the fuck is this? Is his video review of the most recent episode. The duality of man, you know? The light novel here is like, what the fuck is this garbage? And then the enemy only is like, woo, this shit peak. I agree. We're about to get serious. And serious this episode was. I mean, Jesus, man. Just 
watching a situation where the class is more or less okay, but then there's that one sour grape who's just, it feels like Hirata. one move and someone's getting assaulted. And that's pretty much what happened with, I think her name was me. I mean, it's not the worst thing. Poor Michan. I mean, we've all seen these anime where a character loses it and then he starts actually like backhanding. Luckily, it seems to be that he was shoving, which still isn't acceptable, but it's not as bad as it could have been. And the idea- Michan's been getting shit on over and over again, man. Like multiple times, shut the fuck up, Michan. Pushes her, Yamagawa's doing that shit too. Hirata does that too. And Michan is in, you know, the defect class. Well, we're in class C now, but we all still have defects. What is Michan's defect? I was thinking about this last night. I'm like, why does she keep simping over Hirata other than the fact that he's like a popular boy, right? The most popular kid at school, I mean, in her class. So it's like, it makes sense why the girls want to simp. But then maybe Michan's defect is like, she has like chronic I can fix him syndrome. You know, no matter how bad people treat Michan, Michan won't like give up on them in this like romantic relationship wise. Right? Is, is that her defect? I don't know. Idea that I don't know what it is between Yamauchi's like exit when he decided to grab a chair and try to hit someone who's like three times his size. Koenji. Or in this episode where, um, well, I think his shoulder got dislocated. In my head canon, his shoulder got dislocated and he- Yes. Is it, can you guys confirm this in the light novel? The so Koenji pretty much, you know, he'd have to try to like get on Koenji again. Fucking grabs his arm. He'd have to boy. One hand in the pocket. So that's the arm that he's holding. So did it really hurt him? I, I want to believe that we popped this fucking socket out, man. Just like what Brandon said. He had to run to the nurse's office to get it repaired or something. I just think it'd be funnier if we assumed that. But the idea of picking her up after this whole scumbag situation. You get and Chad. carrying her like a princess. You get I mean, at that point, you just have to accept your fate that it is what it is. And now you lose. Here's the thing I don't understand. And maybe it's just me because we're in our little schizo territory doing some other shit. Every reaction video I saw, the thumbnails... None of them use Koenji holding Michan. It's only me. Everyone else just used the same Koji and Hirata breaking down picture. I'm like, honestly, I didn't really give a fuck about the Hirata shit, dude. I was too head over heels over Koenji in this whole Michan moment, dude. I felt like that was way more entertaining to me, but I get it. I get it, right? The, the, the focus was breaking down Hirata and, you know, building him back up. But surprised that a lot of people don't really, like, hype up. Scenes with Koenji like that. Maybe, maybe I'm just in my own little corner. Live in this man's arms. But that whole exchange and how it wasn't impossible to bring him back. It was still early enough. His attitude definitely soured the class's morale. And as characters like Horikita realize, like, they're not going to be useful. Like, can we even rely on them? If we have to rely on him, is he going to sabotage? Like, at this point, it feels like he doesn't give a shit about the class. And the way someone like Aino Koji just let him spill his heart and really, mm -hmm. like, when you have a character who seemed sleep-deprived, seemed on edge, was seeing right through our boy that this is who you are deep down inside. Like, Remember, we got to set the stage to break them down. Aino Koji, is, he's been doing this over and over again since season one, right? He just waits for someone to be at rock bottom, swoops in, manipulates them, tool acquired, that should do it, right? That's his signature line. You're expecting something explosive, but not to be repaired. It felt like he was too far gone. And then you just get the bombshell. The way they directed his past from, Yo. I think he said it was his middle school years. I don't know, like just the, the visual flair to that, the way he explains how he pretty much turned that class into pretty much being robots programmed to follow the rules because what he introduced was whatever, whatever you do will be given back to you. So like, he just operated like Ryu in a middle school. Like, give me this Hirata back, dude. I don't care about pretty boy Norma Hirata. I want this Hirata back, man. So the exact same punishment. And it's no wonder a guy like him got to that point after seeing a close friend almost die from taking his own life. When you consider the fact that a lot of shows don't go the road of actually showing why bullying can be so bad, like bystanders can have as much guilt as the ones committing it, because when you see someone in your school, I mean, been in schools where people have actually took their life, like that was a thing that I had to experience. And while I didn't know the person myself, I mean, I saw a lot of guilt of not reaching out as much or not standing up as much from people in the hallway right so the idea of just seeing that and then looking at Yamauchi the dude was a douchebag and I don't feel any sympathy for him at all mm -hmm. but you can see why someone like him was so this is essentially bullying you're targeting someone and if you I just don't get that 
logical jump. Like, I understand that his fucking middle school friend got bullied so bad that he got put in a fucking vegetative state. He wanted to take his own life. I understand that. But, like, Yamauchi is a completely different scenario. He's a completely different person. He was not being bullied. He started this shit. Talk shit, get hit back. Fuck you, Yamauchi. That's why this part, I just couldn't accept it. Like, I understand that Hirata got triggered. He got reminded of his PTSD. It's a similar situation. But that logical jump of reminding of his middle school friend from the Yamauchi incident, I'm like, nah, man, that's not me. If you don't stand up, then what happens when someone like that does take their life or attempts to, the guilt you must have. Like, Every is this the light novel to anime adaptation, like, problem? Like, I'm truly trying to do mental gymnastics to connect the dots, but, like, you have to... It, it, it is not even one-to-one. -one. It straight up isn't, dude. Yamauchi going away by, by Suzuni, like, taking him out like that after Yamauchi fucking betrayed us, that is an entirely different fucking thing. And I get it. It's the whole bystander effect that he did nothing and he just stood there and let it happen so he wanted to step in. I guess that kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know, man. I, I, if, if there was anyone other than Yamauchi and someone actually nice that was getting like bullied into that situation, then I'd be like, oh yeah, that absolutely makes sense. But Yamauchi, fuck around and find out. Everything makes a lot more sense. I don't agree with him on his opinion of Yamauchi or anyone who considered him a friend. I think he definitely burned those bridges. But his reasons for standing up for the bullying make sense. Unfortunately, he ended up becoming a bully in the form of True. he was treating people. Bully me chan it wasn't as bad as it might have developed over time, but, you know, it still is what it is. Which then explains the whole ruling with an iron fist approach, and just everything about that was just so well done. The biggest kicker was what Aino Koji then said to him afterwards, which is, you're hmm. responsible. And just the way he just is so dumbfounded, similar to myself, like, what did you just say? But it makes sense. Really? Right, that scene is like, at the end of the day, it was all your fault he done it's like what because he just kept making excuses and that's where the reality check comes in realistically there was only one class who could prevent anyone from being expelled and that was the girl who was able to do a bunch of manipulation and get help with Aino Koji to get the points needed it wasn't possible for anyone else to do that and if it was i mean that would have been up to him to figure out and i think because i know koji didn't go that route he didn't see it as a valuable way or a realistic way anyway but i like his logic of if you're gonna say and you're gonna hope that there's a way like he did with his outburst that everyone should be safe then it's also up to you to accept full responsibility no deviating blame it's not horikita's fault it's your fault. And it makes a lot of sense. It's very blunt, but the way he rebuilds him and how he reminds him that he can be a valuable asset and how- Yeah, it's, it's a very delicate manipulation, right? We can't just shit on him over and over again. It's good, it's bad cop, then it's good cop, right? You gotta do enough bad cop to break him down. But if you break a tool down to the fucking, you just grind everything down, then it's pointless, right? So then we gotta build it up and you're like, actually, you can do this, Hirata. If you shoulder that blame, it doesn't mean you have to just give up and die, but more so you can be a stronger version of yourself, was really good character writing. Yeah. It would have been very easy for Aino Koji to just be cold, merciless, and ruthless, and tear this man down and walk away instead. That's what I would have done. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a piece of shit. I would have just roasted him, just walked away. But, but yeah, you gotta build him up, or the whole roasting session, like, what are you doing? You're trying to make him hit rock bottom, then you wanna gain him back by manipulating him at his most vulnerable moments. Instead, he tore that man down to rebuild him back to potentially even a stronger version of himself, recognizing that he isn't alone and that he has those connections, like the girl you're shoving away and all these numerous classmates who have been so disappointed or- I wonder how Hirata's gonna be different from now on though, because Hirata always has been like a pretty good, like, um, quote unquote, proxy leader, right? Before Suzune stepped up, Hirata, Hirata was doing his thing. I don't know, Koichi never really had to use him. Hirata was always doing his thing. But now it's like, what is the difference going to be from Hirata? I don't understand that part. I guess that's what we can look forward to. Or fearful of how you've been acting. Those are people to rely on. This isn't a sign of weakness. The only sign of weakness was how he was acting and how just much of a dick he was being, right? And I love what they did there. Like that conversation, that revelation, the backstory explaining why he was so targeting on Yamauchi. You know, his pissed off behavior while infuriating. I mean, there was always a reason you could see why he was acting like that. It's just, you know, he needed a reality check, which is where Aino Koji came in. And while he doesn't, you know, apologize in the way of like, I wasn't wrong for standing up for 
for Yamauchi. For Ikita, you weren't wrong for basically targeting him either, given the situation, which was really nice development. But either way, this was a very impressive episode. I didn't think they were going to be able to top last week after how explosive it was. You think it topped it? Well, actually, actually, now I think about the Koenji Micha moment. The Koenji Micha moment was kind of cracked. See, the way that I grade episodes is, did Koenji do something, and how cool was it compared to the last time Koenji did something? So, this time we had Koenji carrying Michan. The episode before, Koenji grabbed the chair and told Yamauchi, just fuck off, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. I don't know. I feel like the last episode is still better. It's still better, but the Koenji moment's special in this episode, too. It was, but, you know, when you see the... As he's just talking about Anako and Hirata, and here I am, just memeing about Koenji scenes. The opening not play, and the credits are immediately kicking off. You know you're in for a good time, and a good time this episode was. Yep. Let me know what you thought, because I absolutely love One thing I'm a little bit upset about, and guys, go to Mr. Brandon. Like his videos, sub to his channel if you'd like to. But one thing that I kind of was sad about was how Hirata kind of apologize to Michan and Michan seems to accept it so Michan and Hirata are probably gonna be a thing again but it's like fuck I just want I don't know Michan and Koenji what do they have in common they don't have anything in common maybe just a one time thing and it, that it is what it is now we have three more episodes left special exam I hope Koenji pops up more and we got that chess match coming but hey I'll see you until the next episode